if you ask people at the moment what is the crisis, I think they'll feed back to you that this is a financial crisis. And of course it is a financial crisis and what's interesting is that governments have taken immediate action and have spent billions and billions in order to address the crisis. But the underlying crisis of course is a much longer one and a much greater one which is about what we're doing to our planet. And yet the actions that we're taking on that do not have the immediacy or the spend that we see on the financial crisis. So the financial crisis is with us, but actually all of us need to face up to an even greater crisis that is looming up on the future for us and our children. Uh, there is one central issue that humanity has to face, and that is climate change. But one shouldn't discuss climate change by itself. It must be linked to population, uh, the financial systems that we have, biodiversity. A whole range of different issues need to be seen in terms of a complex system. The idea of a time of crisis I think needs to capture the fact that this is not a moment in time. I think we've been in a time of crisis for a while. But I think we need to ask the question about what kind of crisis that is and who's affected by it. My particular um, concern always is asking where are the people in the time of crisis. And I think rather than simply seeing this as an issue for government stimulus packages, for example, or industry crisis, I think we have to ask very important questions about the one billion people in this world that live below uh, uh, one US dollar, or as I believe it's now been adjusted to a dollar twenty-five a day. These are people for whom the concept of crisis is not a new issue. So I work with homeless people, and, and uh, even in the times of good, in the times of boom before the, 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 the financial uh, collapse, actually there was millions of people homeless. So they were in a crisis before the financial crisis and they're still in a crisis and there's more people. So I think there's three crises that are kind of converging. I believe there's a crisis in leadership in the world. I, I, I don't believe we've got good leaders. Secondly, I believe there's a crisis in society. So with the globalization, we're all struggling with what the values are now. We're importing values from different countries and what does it mean our neighborhood, our family, our community, and, and how do we, are we together? So there's a crisis there and there's a, a crisis in the economy. In my understanding, um, the um, um, global crisis that we're facing um, has to be connected to you know, finances, climatic changes, um, natural disasters, for instance. Anytime you see um, some kind of uh, destabilization in the way that people are used to living, um, either um, recession or uh, extreme weather changes or um, other sudden um, very significant changes in, in uh, ways of livelihood, um, we could actually call that um, a crisis. But um, if it uh, is, is, if it's, uh, is, is a problem that actually transcends the borders of nation states, um, transcends the regions, particular regions of the world, then we have to think about it in a, you know, in a global uh, sense. Crisis in Japanese term, kanji character. It is consisted of two kanji characters, right? A risk and opportunity. Combining two, that means crisis. And I strongly feel that, of course, we have to cope with this uh, the uh, risk situation with business. Uh, the uh, measures or method, but at the same time, we have to uh, create new opportunity through this uh, crisis situation. I would like to point out uh, two crises. Uh, one is a uh, current uh, global financial crisis. And the main people are trying to revitalize the local economies and the national economies. But the question is either we could take this as an opportunity to change the society. Uh, for example, the green economy is one of the possibilities. But uh, still many people are willing to utilize a business as usual model. And so this is a very important point. Either we could take this as an opportunity. So change the challenge to opportunity. Another issue is that, uh, of course, the global environmental crisis. Of course, this is a very serious issue. So we are discussing about uh, the climate change, discussing about uh, the loss of biodiversity. And again, uh, this may 
be an opportunity for us to change our unsustainable society to the sustainable society. For me, uh, sustainability is about living within your means. And in the developed world at the moment, we're living on three planets, or the equivalent of three planets. Uh, the world as a whole is living on one and a half planets. But as far as I know, we've only got one. And we're only going to have one for quite a long time to come. So sustainable living is living in a way that you are using the planet, but only the planet that we have. Otherwise, we're borrowing and stealing from our children and our grandchildren. And they're not going to have uh, a planet left in, to enjoy what we've enjoyed. So we have to move quickly to um, identifying what we want as our lifestyle and matching the ability to have that lifestyle with what the earth can give us on a sustainable basis. We cannot borrow from our children. You know, most uh, international lawyers basically talk about the idea of intergenerational equity, the fact that uh, intergenerational obligation, what we have now, we inherited from past generations, and then we have a duty to um, pass that on, you know, some kind of secured environment uh, to generations unborn. So that's, that's maybe, you know, that's for me, you know, one way to look at, you know, sustainability. Um, to ask this simple question, you know, what, uh, what is the impact of what we do today for um, people who are, uh, who are going to uh, be born, you know, after us? So in, it makes sense in the environmental, you know, um, uh, sector for climate change issues and all of these imagine global environmental issues. It makes sense for financial crisis. It makes sense for every single, you know, development issue. It's very simple to explain sustainability in the context of humanity. We need to learn to live within the limits of this planet. We need to understand we only have one planet. We need to understand that it's a closed system. If you take something, you deplete. If you throw something away, it stays within the system. Sustainability for me has to be uh, about a number of things. It has to take uh, environmental and ecological dimensions into account. But it also has to take uh, equity and human security, the, the needs of people into account. If it, if it doesn't take the needs of people into account and it can't meet those needs over a period of time, then it isn't sustainable. It has to be something that can be embedded, that becomes um, a natural and normal way of behaving, that involves changing the way people think at every level, from the way in which you manage water in your household, to the way in which you manage public transportation, to the way in which you manage things at, at a global uh, level. It has to understand that we can't break ourselves down into notions of um, states and societies and communities. That we have to think globally and we have to understand that, uh, that we're part of a broader common effort. We have to change the way we're still thinking, and that is complex, but it, we can't continue to live in a profit-driven, consumer excess society. Uh, we don't have enough resources for that. And when, when the governments look at GDP growth above all else, when businesses look at profit without looking at the impacts socially and environmentally, uh, it, it's the same old, same old that's led us into this crisis. It's just going to rapidly get worse. We have to do things differently. All of our institutions have to change because all of our institutions, whether they're companies or universities or whatever, are geared to a model of growth and they're geared to a model of just taking from the natural environment and throwing the waste out into the natural environment as if it will uh, just dispose of it. So we need to, in economic language terms, to internalise externalities. That's the most important thing. We need to understand that the world now is totally connected because of the telecommunications revolution. And we need to understand that actually power lies in different places. In some places, it lies with the nation state. In other places, it lies with large companies. In other places, it lies with social movements, with non-government organisations. So global governments and local governance are really crucial and fascinating issues, really.
uh, maybe the bulk of you know the um, uh, you know uh, what needs to be done has to be done by governments. I don't you know um, I don't question that, but I think the lesson that we all have to take away from this is that governments alone you know will not be able to solve you know these problems. Um, the private sector needs to come to the table. Civil society needs to come to the table. But when all these stakeholders come to the table. Um, we also have to be concerned about accountability, for instance. Um, businesses have been critiqued for not being accountable to their broader, you know, um, you know let me put it, global constituency, um, because they are controlled by their shareholders. And, you know, um, so people say, well, if you bring businesses to the table, how do you make them accountable for you know, some of the social values, you know, human rights issues, for instance? Um, so that's a valid criticism, you know, but the UN also has encouraged, you know, um, some kind of voluntary mechanisms like the Global Compact, for instance, to give an example, as a way to, you know, to, um, for businesses to actually voluntarily, in the absence of regulation, subject themselves to basic human rights, you know, uh, principles. We've had about 10, 20 years of development of voluntary corporate responsibility initiatives around the world. What we now need to do is to look at the whole economy and we need to produce change not just in our companies but actually in our government and in individual behaviour as well. So we need a whole economy approach. That's why we talk about sustainable enterprise economy. C. I think for sure uh, the, some of the change makers that are around now are the space I'm in which is social entrepreneurs um, and I think social entrepreneurs who would traditionally combine business disciplines with NGO disciplines together in one certainly have some answers because what they're doing is, is looking at apparently intractable social problems and providing practical solutions and there's examples of social entrepreneurs that are doing that all over the world. So the challenge then is uh, okay if that's happening and these uh, leaders and social entrepreneurs have been successful in a local way how do you take that to scale? And that's where you kind of connect in then with business, um, big corporations or government to work out how uh, we can get the proper scale mechanism uh, in place uh, that will therefore uh, uh, um, tackle the problems in a, greater, in, in a much greater number. These solutions have to function at levels of scale. We can't just find these solutions at the level of international negotiation. We can't just find these solutions at the level of what governments do. And we also can't find these solutions just at the local level, at the level of what communities or individuals might do. So we do have to find ways of creating the right kind of enabling environments. Uh, and we have to find ways of linking questions of scale. Now, that's in some ways seems like very much a theoretical statement. So the question is, how do we do this in practice? I think our policy making is not particularly inclusive. I think it's controlled very much, it's, it's elite decision making. And I think uh, where we find the best kind of solutions is where we find um, engagement, not just with the people that we call stakeholders, but also with what we might call rights holders, those who are going to be most affected by policy. That doesn't have to take the form of actually physically bringing people around the table but it does have to ensure that when we're making decisions and we're implementing policies, we think about who's going to be most affected by this and how do we take those interests into account. In order to establish uh, the new governance system applicable to the uh, long-term decision-making process, I think that we need to set up some sort of arena, uh, something like uh, the global uh, commons and so that uh, we could invite a different stakeholder to join to the collective action. So this is a sort of idea. And uh, we also proposed uh, in COP10 uh, the new initiative we call Satyam Initiative. And so this is uh, exactly the same. We propose the necessity of establishing new commons, not uh, just the private or the public, but it's an intermediate way, asking to the local government uh, private sectors and NGOs and the civil society to join to the maintenance of the areas and so that uh, we could uh, keep the balance 
between the conservation of biodiversity and the increasing of uh, the economic welfare in the region. So this is a sort of idea that we are proposing. Business is only answering the needs of the people uh, and governments are responding to the requests of the people. So it's the people that need to make their new vision clear to themselves and then to allow businesses and to governments to respond because businesses will go out of business unless they respond to what the public is looking for. Governments will not get elected if they don't provide uh, the message and the answers that people are looking for. So we all as individuals have to decide what is the answer and business and government will respond to that.